We're going to start the annual meeting a little earlier than we thought, just because we can and everybody seems comfortable. We're not going to switch the chairs around, so stay where you are or come to a closer table if you'd like. And um, one thing I wanted to ask you is how many of you are now currently met? Oh, let me introduce myself. I'm Diane Macario, and I've been chair of the advisory council for three years. And um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, and I just wondered if we could have a show of hands about how many people are members, currently enrolled members. Great, because I understand from Mary Carlson, who's our most wonderful governance instructor, that we need 15 members present to have this, so that's great. <laughs> so um, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to oh, ask that you make sure you got a raffle ticket and that you have your little half. It's, we call it a raffle, it's for door prizes. And if you didn't get a ticket, please make sure you get one. And uh, we're going to have a drawing at the end, so you have to stay. Um, and first, I'd like to introduce one of the advisory council members and, and one of the people who's done a great job of providing us some music. I don't know, many of you might not have gotten to hear it, but it was lovely music um, in this little interim period. So, Rick. Hi everybody, um, Rick Winston. I've been on the advisory council for three years now. Uh, a shout out to uh, the musicians. Now this is a great example of what can happen at the senior center. Susan Reed, Jacob Stone, Greta Stone, they lead a weekly drop-in uh, jam session group. So uh, they, they were not any old musicians who came in off the street to play today. They were really happy to do something for the senior center. Uh, uh, so I've been asked to uh, just mention who is uh, the, uh, these annual meetings are a time of turnover, who is leaving uh, our advisory council and who's coming on. Um, leaving uh, our Diane McCario and Susie Swenson, our chair and vice chair respectively. Uh, Laura Morris, Barbara Dahl, and uh, newly elected, uh, Julie Hand, Abby Colahan, George Olson, who's over there, uh, Chris Clark, uh, just elected to another term. So uh, thank you to everybody who stepped forward. And I just want to uh, give a little extra shout out to Diane and Susie. Uh, through these three last three years, I've had a kind of front row seat on the AC, uh, observing a sterling example of organizational leadership in turbulent times. Diane and Susie, in running these meetings, they never panicked. They continually raised insightful questions about short-term problems, long-term goals. They kept the meetings in focus. They navigated fraught relations of all kinds constantly reminded us on the AC of the Senior Center's mandate to serve its population well. They did all that with grace and with unfailing good humor. We'll miss you both a lot, but you're, we're glad you're taking a well-deserved rest there after <laughs> serving this organization so well. So, thank you to our departing members. Susie, did you want to say something? Hi, I'm Susie Swanson. Um, I didn't know Rick was going to say that. Thank you, Rick. It's not every day you hear something nice about yourself, so it's <laughs> kind of nice. Anyway, let me turn my computer on because I just want to take a quick second and. Um, Hello. Um, Sorry, Rick, I'm going to bring this up. <laughs> um, I just want to specifically acknowledge Diane, um, just because, well, for a lot of reasons, because she was a pretty, she's a pretty amazing person, but in the last three years, it's not easy to be the chair of the, the AC, and, um, you know, I just want to acknowledge um, her incredible dedication and support for the Senior Center. I mean, she's been on the AC for six years and chair for the last three 
during that time, you know, we had COVID, um, we had um, a lot of tumultuous events happening here. We lost our director. Um, so especially after Sarah left and before Amy was hired, there was a big gap in time that we had um, Arnie, Arnie, I'm not dissing you, man, but um, we didn't have our own director. And Diane really stepped up to the plate and played a really big role in, um, during that gap. And specifically, she let us out of the, I call it the COVID depression, <laughs> but uh, where we lost participation, membership funds, things of that nature. And she kind of played a de facto role as a defender of, of what people really in our membership wanted here um, from being a member of the, the Senior Center. Um, okay, so I have to say her easygoing manner, along with a pit bull-like tenacity, allowed um, you know, <laughs> her to represent what people wanted. And there was a lot of other people, I'm not just saying Diane was the only one who did things. I mean, obviously we had a lot of people in membership who was, you know, played a good, a big role in, in trying to steer our way out of where we were. But, you know, being a pit bull with lipstick, so to speak, is, is a good way to get people to continue to listen to you as opposed to turning you off. And she had that, that particular kind of um, capability. Anyway, she worked with Arnie and Kelly, and I, and I have to give Arnie and Kelly a, a, a lot of credit. Um, at the beginning, I think there was different opinions, and, and I think they, they did listen um, to what people wanted um, from this senior center. And, and Kelly just came in. And Kelly just came in. And um, so anyway, and we worked with the community members and just helped keep the, the AC, um, I mean, the, the senior center agenda moving forward until we have our new illustrious leader, Amy. Anyway, um, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to say. And then she's uh, leaving with a much firmer uh, foundation and a solid foundation for the new AC members to work with. And we owe her our um, thanks and applause. Thank you so much, Susie, and thank you, and thank you, everybody. And Kelly, um, welcome. Kelly Murphy just came, and um, I just wanted to say a couple words just to review a little bit about what kind of year this has been. A lot of you have been coming to this place for a long time, and um, <clears throat> it's just been a pretty remarkable year uh, for us, I think. Um, just about a year ago, as, uh, as, as Susie said, you know, Sarah Lipton resigned, and there was no immediate plan to replace her. And around that time, Kelly Murphy, assistant city manager, was assigned to oversee the center. And um, thanks for coming today, Kelly, and for all the work you did over this last period to get us to where we are. And uh, Bill Fraser was invited. He could not come. Oh, welcome, people. Have a seat. Uh, but he did send a message, and it says, many thanks to you, all the AMSAC volunteers, and our great staff for the wonderful progress the center is making. Um, but I wanted to also um, just do a little review of the history. A couple weeks after our last annual meeting a year ago and Sarah's resignation, there was an enormous flood in the city. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Around that time, we learned that there would be an audit or review of MSAC before a new director was hired. And with the situation at that time, the review would take months and the city had more than enough to do. Also, because the city was so stressed by the flood, there was a hiring freeze in all city departments. Some of you know part of this history. Um, this situation was distressing to all of us, and I think you all know that without a director, the staff was working very, very hard, and many activities and plans for the center were on hold, and we were just kind of limping along. And in August, there were two unbelievably well-attended meetings, as you know, town meetings, which were organized and coordinated by members. And there was a meeting with Bill Fraser um, on September 23rd, when he explained why it was necessary to review MSAC programs, especially for their financial stability. 
and at our request, two members of MSAC were added to the city's review group. At those meetings, members of real, you all really turned out and spoke passionately about the role of the center and your hopes for its continued growth and recovery. And again and again, you expressed the need for a director. You also met in small groups. You posted on Front Porch Forum. You wrote articles for The Bridge and letters to the editor. And you sent letters to the city council members and the city manager. Uh, and a few of you also met with your city council members. And I'd like to think that's because so many people were so engaged uh, that the city manager announced a thaw in the hiring freeze for the senior center. And in the meantime, some of us explored the possibility of using the Jackman Fund for hiring a new director. And then we also put together a proposal, some of you know this, for the city council, and it was to hire an executive director, and that was on October 25th. The result of that meeting was not an executive director, but I, we found that there was a plan to sort of reorganize the city, um, the, the community services, and that we would have a director who was program and membership director, and that's Amy now. And, um, and the city, and I appreciate this, especially for you, Kelly, that we were involved in the development of the job description and in the hiring process. That was really important for us as members. Um, so I think those last months, these last months have been a real learning process. We found, more, uh, more, found out more about how the city council functions, which is really quite different than anything I had thought. We got to know our city council reps, we learned about our budget and about the Jackman Fund, and most importantly, about the effect of being involved and speaking out as MSAC members. And I want to thank each and every one of you who came forward to talk about the need of a vibrant senior center as, an, as essential to yourselves and to the city of Montpelier. Um, and I personally was really amazed by how much energy there was and by the many conversations that were going on and great ideas were being tossed around, and there was real fire about the Senior Center, and that was incredible. And I believe it really made a difference in the past year, and I want to encourage you to continue to be involved in the Center in any number of ways that you can, and to bring others along. And now I'll introduce Amy, who's our director. Good afternoon. It's nice to see all of you this afternoon. Let's see if I can go up a little here. There we go. So I want to begin this afternoon by saying thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome that I have received here at the Montpelier Activity Center as your new director of program and membership. I want to thank especially my co-workers, Norma, Matt, Shalanda, Poa, Martha, and Yona, who make coming to work each day fun and an adventure. <laughs> and I want to say thank you to my bosses, Arnie and Kelly. It's been great to work with you, and thank you for uh, all uh, helping me through this time of learning all the ins and outs of this job. I want to say thank you for the many words of encouragement that you have all offered to me. Thank you for sharing your vision of what you would like MSAC to be. And thank you for sharing your concerns and frustrations, the frustrations that you have felt as MSAC emerges from a very bumpy, bumpy time not the least of which included the COVID pandemic, severe, severe shifts and divisions in our social and political landscape, and an explosion of technological advances that have permanently changed how we live as humans. Along with the rest of the institutions in American society, here at MSAC, we are trying to figure out who we are going to be in the wake of these enormous cultural changes that we have been through. Like many organizations, we are struggling with fundamental questions like, what will people commit to in these times? How do we connect with folks who are fearful of crowds or conflict? 
how do we, how does advancing technology both help and hurt us as an institution? I've heard over and over again in the past five months that you want MSAC to go back to what it was before the pandemic. I think when you say this, you mean that you want lots of classes, lots of trips, lots of folks at congregate meals, lots of members swelling the rolls. Let me be clear, these are great goals. They are goals that I share with you. We all want MSAC to be a vital, vital relevant, and healthy finan financial organization. However, there is a part of this statement of wanting to go back in time that evokes a rose-tinted glasses sort of nostalgia, where the difficulties of that time fall away and only the good things are remembered. We remember the vitality of that time, but tend to forget the very real struggles of that time, not the least of which was the scrum that formed on registration day with folks hoping that they would get into classes they wanted and fearing the dreaded waiting list. If there is one thing that I have learned in my long career of leading organizations, it is this truth. You can never go back. We all know this. Life moves on. Things change. We are never able to recreate the past. MSAC will never again be what it was in 2018. As much as we would like it to be, it's impossible. And that's good. If we were able to recreate the MSAC of 2018 today, it would feel off somehow, insufficient in the face of who we have become only six years later. The MSAC of the future will naturally look and feel different than the MSAC of 2018. That's not a bad thing. It just is. We have changed, and MSAC must reflect those changes. The key to making MSAC feel the way it did in 2018 is to make sure that it is relevant here in 2024. So back to those questions I asked a few minutes ago about how MSAC will figure out how to be here and now. What will people commit to these days? How do we connect with folks who are fearful of crowds and conflict? How does advancing technology both help us and hurt us as an institution? These are big thorny questions to wrestle with. And the temptation that many leaders fall prey to is to talk to their favorite you know, gurus about this stuff then gaze into their imaginary crystal ball and draw their best conclusion. But I'm gonna try and avoid that pitfall. Instead, I am going to go directly to the people who have the answers to the questions. And the good news is that they are sitting right in front of me. They are you. Here's a radical statement. To create and maintain the Senior Activity Center is not my job. Ever since I began this job, I have struggled with what it means to be the director of program and membership. It would be easy to assume, and maybe even obvious to say, that I direct what happens here at MSAC, that I have the power and authority to create my vision of the Montpelier Senior Activity Center. But this rather corporate understanding of director works best for companies that are making widgets. You aren't widgets. It isn't applicable to an organization whose purpose it is to serve and support people with changing wants and needs. If I were to direct my, and implement my vision for MSAC, it may not be a workable one for you. I may have listened to the wrong people, misinterpreted my crystal ball reading, and incorrectly concluded what was needed. 
And because I am at the center of that vision, when I retire, the vision leaves with me. And it is unlikely that MSAC will find a clone of me to continue the vision if it is even remotely successful. So here's how I've come to interpret the title of director. I make what you want happen. I help you, the members and friends of MSAC, to create the center that you want to be a part of. Each of you are as vitally important as I am in creating and maintaining the Montpelier Senior Activity Center. You are indeed the ones who hold the answers to those big thorny questions. That first question, what will people commit to? Well, what will you commit to? Do you want 12-week classes or one-day workshops? Do you want trips? If so, to where? Do you want to learn a language or learn a new skill? Or do you have a place where the, to go where you can get a cup of coffee and talk with friends? What will you commit to? Let me know. But be warned, I am going to listen to you. And if you tell me that you will commit, I will expect you to do just that to put some skin in the game, as they say. So be honest. Don't give me suggestions that you think a senior, center act, a senior activity center ought to do for people, or ideas that you've seen other senior centers doing and think we ought to be keeping up with the Joneses, as they say. Tell me what you need, what you want to do, what you will really commit to, and if there are enough others who want the same thing, with your help and commitment, I'll make it happen. The second question was, how do we connect with folks who are fearful of crowds or conflict? It's actually two separate questions, I know. Let's deal with the first part first. There are still plenty of people out there who post-pandemic are fearful of being in large groups. Yet generally, one of the main goals of a senior center is to provide community for seniors, opportunities to connect and to get out so they are not the victims of loneliness and isolation, dangers to one's health that are as great as a pandemic. We all know that we need social opportunities. Things like congregate meals and movement classes and companionable activities and there are folks out there who need a bit more encouragement to venture back out into the world after the pandemic. Feast can serve the tastiest meals, and I can plan all the nifty activities in the world and let folks know all about them through the newsletter. But the truth is that the best way to get folks involved is for them to be personally invited by a friend. That's why you have the answer to that second thorny question. Who do you know who isn't here? Who is, and could be for that matter, who needs an invitation and a friend and perhaps a ride to help them get to MSAC? What can you do to help your friends and neighbors be involved here? It won't only be good for them, It'll be good for you and for all of us to grow this supportive and vital community. Now the second part of that question. How do we connect with folks who are fearful of conflict? That's a really real question these days. We live in a very divided society and we are encouraged daily to be fearful of those who think differently than us. And many have come to believe that holding one's ground when arguing is more admirable than trying to understand each other. Yet I suspect that most of us don't want to argue or be defensive. We just want to live our lives peacefully and respectfully. But because of this heated environment we live in, there are folks who fear what behaviors they might encounter in organizations like MSAC. 
Now, those of you who know me know that I tend to have strong opinions and I like spirited discussions, but I know that's not everybody's cup of tea. I also know that not everyone thinks like me or needs to think like me as well. I know that there are proper times and places for those spirited discussions and lots more times that are not appropriate. Because I know all of that, I want to assure you that here at MSAC, under my leadership as director, the expectation is that everyone who comes through these doors will be treated with respect and compassion, not only by the staff, but hopefully by everyone who comes through the doors. That isn't to say that we won't have spirited conversations here at MSAC, I'm quite sure we will, and there will be times when we disagree. But the expectation is that we will always speak to each other politely, listen carefully, and see each other as human beings who are so much more than political or social opinions. It is my hope that we will all work hard to make the Montpelier Senior Activity Center a welcoming and accepting place for all participants. So that last thorny question, how does advancing technology both help us and hurt us as an institution? I think we would all agree that technology is both a blessing and a curse. Technology, especially apps like Zoom and FaceTime, were vitally important in keeping us connected, active, and sane during the pandemic. Zoom continues to be useful in our programming and is now a standard part of our offerings here at MSAC. We do many classes that are hybrid in nature. But we who grew up without Zoom know that being virtually present only goes so far. We know that there is something about being physically present with each other that a virtual presence cannot achieve. This is particularly true when it comes to meals. There's a reason that many spiritual practices happen around a supper table. Eating is a communal practice. Loneliness can feel most acute when one is by oneself eating a meal, and those meals tend to be a lot less healthy. That's why our congregate lunch on Thursdays is so important to offer in addition to the Meals on Wheels program. And it is why the Meals on Wheels program, a nutritious hand-delivered meal by a caring driver who checks in on the recipient, it's so vital that we offer this here at MSAC to connect with people who can't come to us. Zoom capabilities are a great support to our programming. Yet I feel that physical presence is the most important and should be encouraged whenever possible. The other curse of technology is that it takes money and training and technical support, none of which MSAC has enough of. I'm grateful for the staff who are making do with what we have and can afford. I am grateful for the ways they do their best to help others with technical problems here. I'm grateful for our teachers who continue in the struggle to keep our Zoom classes going in the midst of all kinds of technological difficulties. I'm grateful to our participants who exercise patience when the technology fails. How to use technology effectively here at MSAC is going to continue to be a challenge for us at least in the short term, as we balance all of the positive and negatives of that invention. Your continued support and patience will be absolutely necessary as we navigate the implementation of technology here at MSAC. So, this may not be the director's report you were expecting to hear today, I haven't talked about finances or specific programs or showed you ch charts or graphs or anything like that, or even shared any new ideas. Yet I thought it was important for us to look at the big picture, 
of the challenges and opportunities that MSAC faces today. If you want information about those specifics, you can ask me anytime. I am happy always to talk with you. And if you want to know what's happening, read your monthly newsletter. Read your Monday emails. That's how you'll know, the best way to find out. You can check the TV monitor outside of the office if you're curious about what's going on today or other things that are on MSAC's mind. The other thing you can do is ask your friends what they're doing here. Maybe you want to join them. One last thing. You will notice that there are several sheets of newsprint on the wall over here. I hope you will take the opportunity to give us some input, to share your ideas of things you would like to participate in, or sign up to volunteer some of your time. As I said at the beginning, I want to hear from you. This is one way you can let me know what you want. If you have an idea, please sign your name to it so I know who to have further conversation with. <laughs> I do have one new idea I want to share with you, and that's something that's going to happen beginning on the first Tuesday in July. You've probably seen mention of it, but maybe not have heard about it entirely. We're going to be doing weekly creamy runs to Yay. local creamy stands. <laughs> so you can come by the Senior Center at 2.30 on Tuesday afternoon starting on July 2nd. And uh, we will make a trip to a local creamy stand. I will publish where we're headed each week in the newsletter. I have the sense the van is going, but I only have 10 seats. So I may need some additional drivers, or you may choose to meet us there, one of, either one. So, but uh, that's one fun thing we're going to do this summer. And I hope you will take advantage of that on a Tuesday afternoon. Do you have to sign up in advance? Um, I'm still working this out, but I think it might have to be a sign up in advance thing. I know, I know it would be more fun if you could just say, oh, do I feel like going for creamies today? Oh, I do. Let's hop on board, you know. But to start, it might be good for us to sign up in advance so I know how to plan for the hordes that might arrive, I guess is what I would say. So thanks again for coming today and for being a part of the Montpelier Senior Activity Center. I'm glad to be working with you and for you, and I'm looking forward to what the future holds. Thank you. So now I'm going to call on Carol Montgomery to come tell us about opportunities for volunteering for the membership committee. I was one of those people. Oh, so sorry. I was, I was one of those people who spoke up at that meeting, that big, well-attended meeting with Bill Frazier. Um, it was. I just couldn't help myself because I have directed membership in a large organization a long time ago, and as a consequence, I decided to join the membership committee. And before I knew it, I was chairing it. So. You'll probably hear from me as well, and I, I'd like to reiterate what Amy said. We need you to bring your friends. Our goal in the members, one of our many goals in the membership committee is to increase membership. Um, it benefits everybody, uh, new people, new teachers, more money, everything. Just it, growing is always a good thing. So we have several opportunities in the next month or so to put ourselves out there and um, recruit new members or new volunteers or, or whoever, teachers, just by some exposure. The first one is going to be this Saturday, um, starting Saturday, June 22nd, oops, sorry, um, and Saturday, July 20th, Saturday, Ju uh, August 17th, and Saturday, September 17th, we will have a presence at the farmer's market. I went last week because I really wasn't sure where we were going to set up, and I learned that we will be right outside the entrance. Uh, if you're looking at the entrance, there's a, a stretch of lawn, a nice patch of lawn, sort of shady. 
and that's where Diane and I will be this Saturday. Um, anybody else who wants to join us, um, feel free. We'll, we'll have an extra chair there for somebody, and, and I'm hoping at some point that any instructors who want to just come and maybe talk about their class or whatever, that would be great too. So I have a, I have a sign-up sheet for that. Um, I'd like to pass it around, invite a friend to do it with you. Um, Diane has been a great help to me. She sort of got me going here. I've been a member since 2018, but I really hadn't done as many things as I would have liked. The next opportunity is going to be the parade. So uh, we all love the parade, and I think it's going to be probably bigger and better this year than it has been in a couple of years. And one of the things we're looking for are people who are willing to carry a placard such as this. Um, this is just an example. This will have some sticks attached to it. But if we can walk down Main Street and show off all the wonderful things we do to others, they may want to join. They may not know about the classes. They may be something that, you know, interests them. So you have to get out there. We have to show ourselves. We have to, you know, brag about ourselves, and then we'll get more members. That's my philosophy. The next opportunity is, is a unique one and uh, arranged by Johanna Nichols. She's really done a lot to get us going in, this, in all these areas. Is going to be the Mike Montpelier High School Reunion for all classes. It's going to be on Saturday, July 27th in the afternoon at the pool. What a what great place to have it. Hopefully there won't be thunderstorms. I don't know where they're going to put those people probably in the shelter. But we're looking for people there who might, who might be willing to volunteer at a table to talk to the people who've come back, uh, maybe moving back, maybe never thought about the senior center, maybe don't want to admit they're a senior, but we're all going to get there someday. So anyway, those are the opportunities. Um, and if anybody ever wants to share an idea with me, I'm happy to discuss it. Or you know, you want to teach a class, see Amy. <laughs> But anyway, so, and we also would like to, uh, if, if you don't want to be in the parade, but you want to help make these posters, or both, we're going to set a date, and I'll let Matt know so he can put it in the newsletter. The newsletter has been a tremendous help to me. Um, it comes out in email how many times a week? I, I mean, well, it's like... It's supposed to be once. But once, but it's like every other day, and if you don't read it, you're going to miss something. We're more like front porch forum yeah. these days. <laughs> yeah, that, those are the first two things I look for every morning. So anyway, thank you, and uh, I'll pass these, these uh, clipboards around, and hopefully somebody will put their name on them. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, thank you, Johanna. <laughs> okay, so thanks for your attention. We're going to wrap up, but first we have to have a drawing for the door prizes. Susie. And please don't forget those um, places for your input. Uh, are there magic markers or something yeah, around there? Markers okay. On the table. Markers on the table. Anything you'd like to say or ask or would be much appreciated. There doesn't seem to be that many. Does everybody have a ticket? No. <laughs> you have to keep one. Yeah, now you have your ticket. Does anybody here not have a ticket? <laughs> you don't have a ticket? Give her a ticket. She's on the council. All right. Okay. So what we have here is this lovely um, tea set with like a I don't even know what you call that thing, where you put the tea in it, strainer, good word. And um, it has a lid, and it's bright yellow, so you'll never lose it. Um, we have a bag of goodies from Notion, some, uh, some um, yarn, and a bag. <laughs> and uh, we have a, a free class for any semester. Um, certificate as well as a membership certificate. All right. So let's do the membership first. And if they're already membership, this is they have a friend that you give this to. Oh, oh! I was told that if you already paid for your membership for this year, you can give it to a friend so they can become a member. Or, or can they apply it to a class? They can apply it to later. Or they can apply it later. All right. Anyway. All right. So. Um, 
Norma is going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> so you either love her or hate her. <laughs> Okay. Oh, God. Oh, my God. This doesn't even look like a real number. <laughs> it's 2112112. Really? All right. Is that you? Yeah. 211. Say that fast. 2112112. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so next we'll do the bag with the notions yarn and such. Alright, I have a sense that this is, works for every one of you, so I'm going to skip the 2112. Two and just give you the last three numbers. The last three numbers are one one seven. <laughs> I mean again. No way. Really? He's got a pile of tickets back there. <laughs> oh, that's hysterical. All right. Everyone who left. <laughs> oh, Trudy's been at it. Oh, Trudy. All right, for Trudy. There you go. Oh, we should have said no proxies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the next thing is um, for a free class for this semester sometime in 24-25. Madame. Here we go, what we got? Yay! All right, these are bigger numbers. One, three, six. That's me. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> ceramic um, mug with infuser and lid. That's a good word, infuser. And it's bright yellow, it's super cute. All right, here it is. She collected a bunch from the people that left, so she's going to distribute them. Okay, oh my God, she's probably going to get this one too because it's 139. Listen up, 139, is that you? Oh, is that you too? Okay, I was told to wrap this up, so anyway, I want to thank everybody for coming. And, um, you know, this is your senior center, so we hope to see a lot of you in the next 24 months or 36 months or a year, or however long you want to stay. Anyway, do make um, your trip ideas, program ideas, anything else uh, known up there. And um, thank you very much, and have a safe and cool day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.